Today I'm going to teach you how to use a Bunsen burner. We're going to use a Bunsen burner in about half of our labs, so it's important to understand how to use one correctly and safely. And if you use it correctly and safely, nobody's going to get burned, which means we can keep doing cool labs. Okay, so the Bunsen burner is very simple. This is the gas source. Well, the gas source is actually outside, but this uh, turns the gas on. Now, what you have to remember is when this is perpendicular, here's the cord, when this is perpendicular and makes a 90 degree angle, it's off. So if I go like this, it's still a 90 degree angle, so it's still off. So this is off, this is off. So many times students will go to light their Bunsen burner and they go, okay, I'm turning it on, and then they just go off again. The only time it's on is when it's not 90 degrees. So here it's slightly on, here it's fully on, slightly, 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 slightly off, okay? So this is on, and that's very important. You should get in the habit of coming into the lab and always checking that these things are in the off position. Now I have a master switch at the front, which I'll show you in a little bit, which turns all the gas off. And actually, let me show that to you right now. If there was to ever be a bad fire, you run over to here and you push this red button. Now I'll probably beat you to it. When the knob is pulled out, it's on. To stop the gas, you push the knob in and then it's off. So here's the main parts of your Bunsen burner. Now this barrel here will actually unscrew. So let's just take that off and I'll show you. And then that teeny tiny hole is where the gas comes through. How do you control the gas? You can control the gas right here, but most of my students have better success just turning it on and off and I have these preset. But if ever, if ever your flame was out of control, you could turn this down. Then, Let's put the barrel. It's called on. a needle valve. Needle valve. Now, see this gap here? See that gap? That that allows air to mix with the gas. And if you get the right combination of air and gas, you're going to get a perfect flame. You want a pretty blue flame, like you see on the left there. That's what you want. You want a nice blue flame. If you get a blue flame, that center cone gets up to about 1800 degrees Celsius. Now, how hot is that? Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So 1800 degrees Celsius is 18 times more hot than boiling water. So it's hot. Okay, so we're dealing with a really hot flame. So we're going to practice lighting this and we're going to use a flint striker. Now this is a flint striker. And the way you use a flint striker is, here's the flint, and then you wanna make a nice spark. Now sometimes students struggle to get a nice spark. It's a two hand job. You use this thumb to move this back and forth, and then you use this thumb to apply pressure. And then you get a nice spark. Sometimes students ask me why I can't just light a flame with a, a lighter. Well, I don't like to do that with gas in the room. I don't like to have a, a flame like that. I find the flint strikers are much safer. Okay? In a minute, I'm gonna turn the gas on, but let me tell you something. If you turn the gas on, you count up to five. If this thing isn't lit by the time you count up to five, you turn the gas off, you waft and you wait. You never just turn this on and you're like, I can't get this lit, can someone else come over here and try? Because what's gonna happen? If, if this whole area fills up with gas and someone makes a spark way out here, you're gonna have a fireball. In all my years of teaching, I've had one fireball. Last thing I wanna tell you is this is a two person job. So the one person is gonna man or woman, the gas, the other person is gonna light the flame. So I'm gonna be two people, are you ready? So you look at the person who's got the flint striker and you look at them 
and say, are you ready? Person with the striker says, yes, I am. I'm turning it on. Okay. I'm gonna turn it on and count up to five. The gas isn't on yet, okay? One, two, three, four, five. If my striker person hasn't lit the flame in five seconds, what are we gonna do? Turn it off. Waft and wait. So remember, are you ready? Yes, I am. Turning it on. Turn it on, count to five. If they haven't lit the flame within five seconds, turn it off. All right, let's do this. Okay, Brito, are you ready? Let's do it. No, you just have to say, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Let's start over. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Here we go. One. Oh, he got it on one, folks. And the flame is perfect. See that perfect blue cone? You don't have to adjust anything. The bottom needle valve. And then this controls the airflow. Now watch. Let's reduce the amount of air in there and watch how yellow the flame turns. Keep reducing. See, now we don't have a good flame anymore. We don't have that nice blue cone anymore. Okay, now increase, turn the valve and increase. See, that's a lame flame. We don't lame want a lame flame. flame. In fact, I'm gonna go get a penny while you have your lame flame. This is a lame flame. Now watch how much less hot this yellow flame is than our nice blue cone flame. All right, put the penny into the flame. And let's see if anything happens to it. Anything happening to your penny? No, ma'am. No. Nope. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the flame, increase the amount of oxygen till I get my nice. You gotta turn it on. If you do it too much, the barrel comes off. That's perfect. Now, put your penny into that tip of the cone. That's the hottest part of your flame. Sounds like a rocket going off. Yeah, that gentle roar is something people really want you to get. Oh, my penny's melting. It's melting. All right, I'm really stupid. Isn't that cool? That's the zinc coming out. A penny is 97.5% zinc. So you're saying that's zinc? That's pure zinc. Wow. A penny is only 2.5% copper. I'm sorry, Abraham Lincoln. You, you know why a penny is only 2.5% copper? Because copper is more expensive than zinc. And um, if you had a solid copper penny, it would cost more than a penny, which is ironic. Prior to 1982, pennies were solid copper but then the price of copper went up. In fact, the price of copper is so high now, people steal wires like they'll go to um, a parking lot, for instance, and strip the copper wires out of the lights. Combustion engines, getting the right fuel to air mixture. Even in a fire, if you have a fire pit and your fire can't breathe if it can't get air, then it will invariably go out. So getting the right fuel going into a gas grill, to an internal combustion engine, to a Bunsen burner, any kind of flame is important. 